Hello, good evening, welcome to Fido Live 99, and we have a special guest on FaceTime right to my right here, this would be the Chief Colorist, live from her 12th floor luxury uh, hospital room, Twel <laughs> high above Beantown, <laughs> say hello. Hi, looking down on everybody else. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So now I have someone, you know, to talk to while I'm doing this. Uh, I've been looking a little. I've been looking a little pathetic lately, like like I like I've been divorced. All right, here here is Monday strip. We have uh, Fido walking in, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cats passed out on the front step. Goes in the front hallway, and there's one, two, three, four, five cats just passed out in the hallway. Walks up the stairs, and there's one, two, three, four cats passed out in the hallway. Finally gets inside. Felicia asks him, "What happened to my catnip?" I had a year supply in here. No tail wagon. All right, there's Monday. Boy. Boy, she's making some funny noises on the uh, phone. I wonder how much of how much of that the microphone picks up. All right, here is Tuesday. We have Felicia, and she for some reason has some paper and a marker in her hand, and she says the weather is nice again. Can we open the window? Bo says, I haven't put in the screens yet. Please. Oh, all right. And we have birds welcome with an arrow. <laughs> Taking advantage of the situation. All right, there's Tuesday. And, uh, Am I picking up on the mic? Uh, probably. Let me see. Say something. Say something. Vicky, say something. Hello. Keep on, keep on saying. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're being picked up loud and clear, according to the sound. All right, here is Wednesday. If, uh, you people may notice that these are all black and white. That's because the chief colorist over there on the phone is not here to color them. I know. It's been over a month. She left us, what, April 11th? April 10th. Yeah, wow. All right, uh, here is the Wednesday. We have uh, Bo walking in with dog food. Uh, you got to eat this, Fido. It costs a hundred dollars a bag. You spent a hundred bucks for this. Could have gotten good prime rib for that. All right, it's Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, we have to ink this one today. Perhaps. I didn't hear that last one, really. You didn't hear that last one? I didn't hear the punchline. Oh. You spent a hundred bucks for this, you could have gotten a good prime rib for that. <laughs> okay. All right, here is uh, the Thursday. We have um, Dino and Fido. Let's put this closer to the camera. Fido's looking kind of uh, depressed, upset, his hands on his chin. Uh -huh. Dino says, what's that smell? It's cat, 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 cat. The building's infested with them. <laughs> I thought it was waffles. And Bo has waffles here. It's been a rough week for him. Do you have your TV on? Chief what? Colors, do you have your TV on? No. What's that background noise? I don't know. Just noise? Yeah, okay. Noisy hospital. Hello? No. Alright, we may have to ink that one today. I'll think about it. Here is the Friday. And I've got a writing problem with this one that perhaps the Chief Coloros can assist us with. They're at the bar, of course, on a Friday. It's Felicia, Dino, Bo, Fido. And Fido's got an old newspaper, and he's just laughing. Ha, ha, ha. What's happening in the world, huh? The newspaper you're reading, what, what, what's going on? You mean this stuff is true? <laughs> Usually, what's so funny? Mm, nothing now, and he throws the newspaper away like that. Now, here's the thing. I have inserted myself in this too much. See, um, when Fido asks, you mean this stuff is true, Bo says, usually. What's so funny? Now, here's the thing. Bo would not say usually. Bo would say, yes. He would completely believe that everything in the newspaper is true. So, I have to come up with the editorial decision whether I continue my usually, you know, usually everything in the newspaper is true, or whether we go for Bo's sunny disposition and say, yes. No. Oh, so see, that's, that's, that's going to be... Well, a, I guess that is a decision you'll have to make. That, that's a challenging decision. And 
I'm going to have to get my eraser out here right now, and I'm going to have to erase usually, because the character of Bo would not say usually. Dino might say usually, I'm not sure. Dino will probably say no, it's not true. <laughs> but Bo would actually say yes, everything, everything in the newspaper is true. <laughs> Amazing, living in a world like that. But th there you go. <laughs> and here is the Saturday. Uh, now we have, this is. I still have to go over this with the pencil. We we'll probably do this one first. We'll do some um, some finished pencil today. That'd be fun. Um, Felicia says, "I don't think you appreciate how lucky you are to live with a cat. A cat brings you a certain class, an elite status. Not everyone has a cat." And Fido's, Fido's listening to this on the couch in rising anger, and he says, They had a dog first! And luckily, luckily they corrected that mistake. So we got to do the pencil on this one first. Yeah, that's, what we, that's what we'll start with. We can, uh, pull out our remaining Blackwing pencils. Um, Blackwing pencils are used by award-winning creators. Throughout the 20th century, despite the cult following, they fell victim to cost cutting measures in the 90s and were discontinued. But yeah, it brought back. So, uh, my last black wing. Oh. Let's, uh, let's put a point on this, and because uh, otherwise, <laughs> it's pointless. <clears throat> it's pointless! You know, in, in order for some of these jokes to land, I think you have to hear them. <laughs> I think I, um, I'm trying to find a good spot to, to place the phone that I can see it and hear it. Yeah. So I have to hold my hands up. <laughs> you should tell the audience, I've just taken a coffee cup here and I put a uh, uh, solo cup in there and it's made the perfect phone, phone holder. <laughs> a solo cup? Yeah, it's a solo cup. <laughs> By the cup. Well, because the phone won't fit in the coffee cup, but the solo cup's a little bit wider and fits perfectly in the solo cup. All right. As you all know, cartoonists are the dirtiest, filthiest creatures on the face of this planet, so I have to wear this, a glove, so that I do not mush my lines. And also, I don't even want to be touching the paper here because, as I've demonstrated many times in the past, this pencil tends to smudge too. Mm. All right. Um, so, uh, I could, of course, just put down a, a blank sheet of paper. But where's the fun in that? Where's the fun in that? Where's the fun in that? So, uh, viewer mail is what we're going to call this segment. <clears throat> now, I've got two pieces here, and they're on the same topic. And um, I'll just read them, then we'll editorialize them. Yellow is my response. Okay, here we go. I appreciate your video's content is very interesting and beneficial, period. I must commend, period. I noticed you're not having enough engagement, comma, followers, comma, views and likes you were expected to have compared to the effort you put in, period. I am expert in the field. I will grow your channel engagements with multiple of followers, comma, Views, comma, and likes. I like how he uses the Harvard comma there. <laughs> Freely reach out to me so we can discuss via exclamation point email. And got, he's got Gmail, WhatsApp, Facebook, and this is really interesting. Facebook rather than O O uh, rather than you know uh, O O. He's got zero zero. F A C E B zero zero. Facebook, Telegram, Instagram. I blocked all out. So um, my response. Well, my response to him was, thanks, but it's not my intention to be successful on Rumble nor YouTube. I will not need your services, period. By the way, comma, I could help you uh, with the proper use of English. The way you use the language, comma, you sound like an internet scammer and not a legitimate business. So, um, surprisingly, I got a response to that. And he says, all right, sir. I will like to learn the proper use of English. Please contact me by way of email. <laughs> he called my bluff. He's still doing that thing with the Facebook. 
So <laughs> my final response was, you called my bluff. In reality, I do not want anything to do with you and certainly do not want to waste my time on you. I just want to draw a comic strip. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of that guy. Uh, Zedek, I guess. Uh, next guy. Hey there, comma. The comic strip. <laughs> Are you ready to make waves in the digital world? Question mark. Let's boost your channel success! Exclamation point. As an experienced digital marketing expert committed to nurturing dynamic online communities, I'm ready to propel your channel to unprecedented growth. Experience exponential expansion. Engage with your audience and witness your channel flourish. Expect measurable results. No more vague promises. We deliver concrete outcomes. Benefit from personalized strategies. Your channel's path to success begins with custom solutions designed for you. Ready to spark the digital revolution? Question mark. Reach out to me at... I kind of like how you go. Hey there. And he just plugged in the comic strip. We need to say Fido. Hey there, Charles. Hey there. No, no. Hey there, the comic strip. <laughs> so this is not a form letter whatsoever. So, <laughs> yeah. so my response was, no, I'm just here to draw a comic strip and not become a digital creator. Fake bots adding to my numbers really won't help me at what I'm trying to do. But thanks anyway. And I haven't received a response from him because I think the thing does have a form letter that will fit such a, such a thing. You should, you should make a response form letter. <laughs> Well, guess what I noticed today? You know, they're putting uh, Marvel characters on uh, the Coke cans. And I thought this was the Black Panther until I noticed the titty. No, 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 this is Sherry. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, did I actually get on camera? Yeah, I think I did get on camera. Yeah. All right. Um, does Chris Pat, does Chris Pratt get to play every animated role? Uh he doesn't sound like Garfield to me. Lorenzo Music was Garfield. You know, he used to play Carlton, your doorman, on, on road out here. Oh, this is Carlton, your doorman. Yeah, it was great, yeah. Um, but people might forget that Chris Pratt, besides playing Garfield, has also played Mario. And back in the old days, he played Emmett in the Lego movie. <sighs> um, Garfield beat out Furiosa, 13 million this week. Furiosa only had uh, 11.5. We're going to get back to Furiosa later in the broadcast. Okay. Uh, the Acolyte is coming up next Tuesday. And this is going to give Disney... Oh, this is going to give Disney... <laughs> it's going to give Disney the chance to uh, inflate the numbers. Usually they put these things on on Friday and you just get the numbers from Friday to Monday. Now they can go from Tuesday to Monday. So it's going to be the number one show on Disney Plus, I guarantee. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kathleen Kennedy says women in Star Wars struggle with uh, talk with, with toxicity due to a male dominated fan base. I don't think you have to worry about that anymore, Kathleen. You chased away the male dominated fan base. That, that, that's not a problem. Uh, she, she, um, Leslie here, uh, came to Kathy with a great Star Wars script, and Kathy said. You've written a great Star Wars show. Now go write a Leslie Headland show. Uh, yeah. Uh, Leslie is obsessed with her sexuality. I, I know gay people. They don't act like this. They live, they're normal people. They live normal lives. The sexuality does not dominate their lives. But it does Leslie Headland. Um, it's a... Well, let me get to back to that later about the uh, difference between boys and girls. Now, um, they're doing the, um, the press tour from hell uh, 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 for the Acolyte. And um, this is, uh, I'm calling him Don Lemon's spiritual son, Charlie Barnett. Uh, he thinks Anakin Sky Skywalker destroyed the Death Star. You know, everyone's been uh, giving him a hard time about this. And when, when he was asked about his character's relation to good and evil in the show, Barnett answered... <clears throat> This good and bad element is so dependent upon your experiences, your history, your parents, your friends. Like, so much bleeds into that. And we have uh, Daphne Keen on the side saying, shut up. Uh, oh, by the way, over here on the far right, this is Vanessa, well, not, no, this is Rebecca Hendenson who plays Vanessa Rowell. But she's, um, she's Leslie Hedlund's wife. 
So Leslie has another thing in common with Harvey Weinstein. She's given jobs to actresses she slept with. Oh, really? So uh, Charlie says, and that's what makes it, you know, why Palpatine would be committed to to the directions he's committed at, 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 as to uh, bad or good. You view it. Uh, I personally will will see it as a as bad, but a lot of people would see sides alike. Well. well Anakin just killed a whole Death Star. How many people died on that? <laughs> I find that part of Star Wars really human, and it's the best that. Yeah. Okay, uh, Luke kill, uh, destroyed nothing. So, yeah, let's get the word balloons in here. So, Leslie, here's, here's your girlfriend, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, wife. <clears throat> Here's the rest of the cast. Uh, um, it looks like a kid from the Game of Thrones is on it right here. Um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the one who, who like did the nosedive out of the window after the church was blown up. I, it looks like him. Um, we have Amanda Steinberg, who's like so talented she gets to play two roles. She's like identical twins. One's evil. No, she, she, she's the Patty Duke of Star Wars. This is how talented Amandala must be. And uh, let's see, Lee Jung Jae. <laughs> Look, we're cousins, identical cousins through and through. They talk alike, they walk alike, and even <laughs> quote scripture alike. Yeah, whatever. Um, who else do we know here? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's Charlie. Uh, he's not pictured. That's Charlie there. Uh, Carrie Ann Moss is in this as well, which she's probably going to be killed in the first episode. And. Uh, <clears throat> Leslie Headland, when, when asked which Star Wars was her favorite, she, she sort of pauses awkwardly for a second and then says, I, all of them! <laughs> so... <laughs> like all her children. Anyway, this thing cost, reportedly, $180 million, that would be $22.5 million an episode, or $750,000 a minute. Now, um, that's a lot of money for Disney to spend, of course, and... You would think that someone in the administration, the bosses, would say, stop spending so much money. But, you know, they do have a history of lying for, you know, for financial reasons. Uh, we have here um, a felony, a, a, a first-degree felony, 30-year jail time that Florida has yet to prosecute. This is them um, bribing the Reedy Park people and then charging the bribes to the state, uh, to the city, I mean. Um, but the, the, there's such a history of, well, the Aqualite is filmed over there in the UK, and they get 25% of the money they spend back. Um, my advice to my good friends in the United Kingdom, audit these figures. <laughs> this is a company known for being a little fast and loose, and $180 million, and here's the thing, I bet you in the end it's going to turn into 230 like not, like nothing. And uh, uh, what? it'll turn into 230 million like nothing, I'm sure. Uh, Everyone remember Nelson Peltz? Well, Nelson Peltz yes. has sold every stitch of Disney stock he's ever owned. I think he sold it for $120 uh, a, uh, a, a each, and he had purchased them for as low as 90 So um, Nelson made a billion dollars. He's gotten the hell out of there, taken the money, and ran. ran. It's too bad, because we all had a feeling that perhaps Nelson Peltz would get in there. And Not really. Wh why did they block him? He only wanted two seats on the board. He couldn't have done anything with two seats on the board. They probably could have given him one seat and just stuck him in the corner. He's an old man. He's not going to be around for long. But they fought hand over fist not to get him in there. And they even bought stock, which may or may not be stock manipulation. Nice to meet you, so hi, I think she's talking to okay. a nurse. Charles, I'm sorry. They're doing my, uh, my vitals. So oh, okay. Here. You want me to hang up and call you back later? No, it's not well. It's up to you. Yeah, okay. I'll let you go off okay. in the background there. Okay. So, uh, while... No. You do it right here. I'm going to okay. put her away from the microphone, folks. So I wanted to. Yeah. 
like uh, Tisa Salad with the chicken. <laughs> Tears are pretty good. I'm going to go around the salad. So, uh, I want to talk about Furiosa today and uh, why it's not doing well. And I'm going to call this the return of the Andor effect. Now, I spoke about the Andor effect a long time ago. Uh, supposedly, it's one of the few really good Star Wars shows, and it just didn't do well. No one was watching it because people were so upset with Disney. Uh, I'm thinking we have a similar situ situation here with Andor. Now, do I can I can I show this without any glare from the? Are you gonna play it on? Now, I usually don't play previews, but the reason why I'm playing this preview now is I've been told that the preview makes it look like a girl boss film. And actually, this film is not really a girl boss film. It's wonderfully directed. It's a, it's a treat to the eyes. And um, Chris Helmsworth does a great job. Promise me you'll find your way home. Hmm. Yeah. Promise me you'll find your way home. 45 years after the collapse, a young Furiosa is taken from her family. She will devote the rest of her life to finding her way home. It does look like a, This is her odyssey. Her odyssey. Anyway. Now the, uh, the big problem with Fury Road, was it? The first one? Yeah, it was um, it's sort of a bait, Mad Max bait and switch. Uh, he's captured by a bunch of girl bosses and uh, played by Charlize Theron, I believe. Uh, wasn't it? Mm. Well, this might have pissed off audiences. And now we, we hear this movie's coming out. Mad Max with no Mad Max. Did he say lady and gentleman? <laughs> wow, that's that's, that, that's not a, that, that's I don't think that's a line that, that maybe they could have used another line. <laughs> Ooh, she's putting on war paint. And she digs her way out of the dirt. Women running. Oh, I heard about that scene. Rather than a kiss, they just press foreheads against each other. Oh, isn't that romantic? <laughs> you give good forehead. That's kind of cool. Girl with gun. Yeah. I think I see the problem. They they killed it in the in the advertising. They they killed it in the in the trailer. <sighs> All right. Um, Sequel to Fury Road, and uh, that film lost twenty to forty million dollars. So uh, Mad Maxine here in Furiosa is probably going to lose about the same. And uh, I can't see a third film. Is this the Andor effect? Ooh, hey, could you camera? There we go. Thank you. Is this the Andor effect? That's why I was thinking about calling this the Return of the Andor effect. Oh, we got a title already. Uh, so that might be the explanation. Just in time. 
Well, hello, Chief Car uh, Chief Colorist. Oh, hello. What do we call you, creator? Um, Cartoonist? Perhaps, perhaps. Let me get you set back up in your position. You missed, um, we ran the preview of Mad Max Furiosa to try to explain the Andor effect. You may or may not remember the Andor effect. That is, um, when when you destroy your franchise to such a level that you no amount of effort, no amount of good work can bring you back. Oh wait a minute! Did I lose you again? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, there we go. Yeah, my my computer is hooked up to the phone. Uh -huh. So when you called, the computer was going. Dee -dee 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 -dee. So, all right. Now we're all set up. All right, we've got to do some um, penciling here. And uh, when thinking about Hollywood, um, I've been watching Top Gear all week, and I was suddenly reminded of British Leyland. They were a motor, automotive company over in the UK. Um, in fact, uh, they, they apparently used to make a great car. Um, after the war, Toyota actually went to British Leyland to learn how to make cars as good as them, <laughs> which is something the guys at Top Gear, Top Gear, really lamented. Um, all British, all happened. All, 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 all the people at British Leyland really did was go on strike and make a bad product. What does that sound like to you today? Hmm, who's been going on strike a lot and making a bad product? That sounds like Hollywood. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> so another thesis I was if, if we didn't do the return of the Andor effect I was going to call this uh, Hollywood Leyland but eh, who knows <clears throat> we'll put that we'll put a pin in, in that idea come back to it later um, this is Jenny Nicholson Jenny Nicholson has done a uh, four hour uh, We'll call it a eulogy for Galactic uh, yes, Star Cruiser. Yes. Six yes. million, six million views on uh, on Jenny here. Which you know, Jenny's Jenny's this cute little girl, and she changes her costume up multiple times throughout the uh, thing, and she has the uh, required uh, pile of shit toys in the background that all of our YouTube friends seem to have to have. <laughs> Look, she even has a poke, a pug, poke, whatever you call it, those things from. Uh, so she was an actual Star Wars fan. She uh, went to uh, Galactic Star Cruiser figuring, well, it's $5,000 or so, probably more. Um, I'll get this back when I um, um, do my review on YouTube. It took, she did this March 2020. It took her two years to actually write uh, her review. But by the time she was coming to the end, they closed it. <laughs> Galactic Star Cruiser only lasted 18 months. <laughs> So she was wondering, do I do I continue with this? What do I do? What do I do with this? I put all this money and all this effort into it. So she went on with it, and it turned into a, a screed about what Disney has has done to itself. Uh, it, it, you know, rather well thought out, and uh, Jenny is our poster girl for today. Uh, Irving, Irving on camera one. Could you like zoom into about here so we can see what we're doing? Uh, thank you. Now, Irving's one of the finest internet cameramen in the business, and he misses you as well. All right, and uh, perhaps we can speak a little bit about Jenny Nicholson as we uh, as we work today. And I'll try to recall what I can, as I don't really mind giving out spoilers. Because, well, how many people are going to watch a four-hour YouTube show? I'm I'm used to it. I watch Mauler all the time. <laughs> and perhaps we can also get back onto the uh, whole Andor effect and re-explain it to people. And it's 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 kind of uh, interesting in this day and age that Disney continues to have a uh, massive effect upon pop culture for good and bad, and that uh, now we have whole uh, syndromes. That we can describe, ascribe to Disney. Yeah, I, I had to turn you off because you were you and the nurse were getting a little bit too. 
I had to turn off your uh, phone because you and the nurse were getting a little bit loud, and I figured I wanted to. What? Your phone. I, ha I hung up on you earlier. I hung up on you earlier. Okay. Because you and the nurse were getting a little bit loud, and I wanted to play the um, uh, oh, Mad Max okay. Fury, Yosa, or whatever um, yeah. preview. I usually don't play previews. Okay. But now let's let's get to the serious business of drawing a comic strip. That's why we're here, and why else are we here, Chief Colorist? To make you happy. To make me happy. That's right. This is a fun night that we get to draw, and I'm sure everyone who's drawing their own comic strip alongside at home will attest to how great this is. As I've often said, if everyone upon this planet drew a comic strip, we would all die freezing and starving in our little apartments with no electricity. Well, no, no, no. It's okay for you to be quiet. Uh, this is this is uh, this is drawing time. We do tend to get quiet here. This is drawing time, so we do tend to get a little quiet in this segment of the show. Now, um, I want, don't want to be completely quiet because I've noticed that the um, they they think that I'm not here anymore when it gets too quiet, and I, I think that's probably the reason why Planet Fido was never to this day has yet to be released on either uh, YouTube nor Rumble because I had a I had a long long stretch of absolute silence there uh, trying to put up the idea that to the audience that I was all alone oh. So, uh, any word, Chief Colorist, on when you think you will re any, re any word as to when you think you will be uh, returning? Well, they, did, well, did they did they give you any surgery estimates? Afternoon. Surgery on Tuesday. Uh huh. Surgery on Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday afternoon, so I still have to get through Sunday and Monday. Right. Mm -hmm. And we shall see from there. What's going on? But until then, I don't know much of anything. Well, fortunately, Sunday you can spend the entire day what? watch. Fortunately, Sunday you can spend the entire day watching Fido Live number ninety nine, which will That's which true. will be uh, which will be, uh, be premiering good. at noon. Well, as everyone mm -hmm. is okay. fully aware, at least you got that to look forward to. And the funny, and, and the fun part is you're actually on it now. I can't hear you. What? The fun part is you're actually on it now. I'm on what? Fido Live ninety nine. Oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I definitely am. Yeah, I sat up today for. I don't. Know, I guess my mind's going a little loopy. I sat up today until like four thirty. Woohoo! It's a long day for you. I know. It actually felt like a human. Not just some log in a, in a bed. Hmm. But I have dropped my multitask tool. So oh. I have to wait until the, they come in to uh, oh, no. get me ready to bed to get my tool back. <laughs> that, so would, that would be... Stuck in the position I'm in. <laughs> that would be her long-handled hairbrush. She's able to manipulate that to... Uh, <laughs> To like raise the bed, get the remote yeah, control. Yep, she used to scratch. Back scratcher, yes. Hmm. <laughs> it's used to reach things on the shelf if they get too far away. What, wasn't the nurse just in there doing your blood? What if the nurse what? Wasn't the nurse just in there two minutes ago? Oh, blame me. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I meant I didn't. No, I'm getting old. I'm forgetting this, this stuff. I need to write things down. I need to write things down. I need to write things down. 
No, not really. No, I figured I'd leave it to you so you have something to talk about. And how does one break both legs? What, are you jump, jumping out of an airplane? No, I was falling off of a toilet. So maybe you Well, um, here's the thing. She might have done some Darwinian damage to the blood uh, pool. Oh, stop <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. As a kid, we fell off our jungle gym and we rubbed some dirt in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. Not good, not good. You know, maybe this kid needed to fall off that jungle gym. He wouldn't have, wouldn't have killed him. He would have got some bruises. Well, it broke her leg, so he must have not been yeah. Okay, to all of our Fido viewers, for future reference, if you see a kid falling off a jungle gym, let him fall. <laughs> It'll do him some good. Okay, we're not going to call this the return of the Endor effect. I've, um, I'm, I'm pulling an audible. <laughs> we're calling this one. <laughs> Let it fall. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I have to say that. Nope, we're calling this one "Let It Fall" <laughs> because because it it fits so many other things so much better. Return of the Girl Boss, probably not, but "Let It Fall." Nelson Peltz sells all his stock, <laughs> but but Disney, "Let It Fall." The Acolytes coming out. The Acolytes coming out soon. We know what's going to happen here. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. It's sort of the, uh, <laughs> what we can say about Disney. Let it fall. Uh, they've got their three big problems. Brain drain, lo audience lost, and Disney Plus. And everything they make goes straight to Disney Plus. They don't make a penny on it. They supposedly spent $170 million on the Acolyte. There's no way in hell they're going to ever recoup that money. Even if it's successful, put it in a theater. Put it in a theater, maybe. Maybe you can sell movie tickets. There you go. Won't work. Get rid of Disney Plus and license your crap out, dummies. Disney Plus is never, ever, ever going to be worth it. No. But uh, we don't care anymore. We used to love Disney. We honeymooned on at, at, at Disney World in Florida. Hmm. Remember those commercials? I'm going to Disney World. You know, at the Super Bowl or after any like big successful event in someone's life, they pull the camera up to his face and he'd, and he'd say, "What now? I'm going to Disney World." You know, people used to love this company, and it's. It, it, yeah, it's so sad what's happened to it, but now it, we, we we've reached to the point where we know it's you know, Nelson Peltz is gone. No one, there's no knight in shining armor. There's no prince coming to rescue us from what Disney has become. Oh, the best we can do is just get our entertainment and watching it fall. Let it fall. Just like a kid off some jungle gym. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> stop. 
And even even the jungle gyms today, you know, we had blacktop and concrete in our jungle gyms. Now all these little sissies have wood chips and rubber mats and... and <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and when it got really hot out, the metal slides were like frying pans. If, if, if I, I once had was, was wearing shorts, and I went to sit down on a thing, just the back of my leg, but below my short. No, those are back in the days when we wore these shorts that would just, just up underneath your ball sack. So if you sat wrong, perhaps your ball sack might even like etch out the bottom of the shorts a little bit. <laughs> so, so I sat on the on the slide and burnt my ball sack. <laughs> well, need this. That built character. <laughs> that built character, I tell you. <laughs> and this woman, this woman who jumped to the rescue of this child who was falling off a jungle gym, um, robbed this kid of the less life lesson he she or she should have learned oh, no. and in the process she was properly uh, punished with her broken leg so so with all alcoholics or drug addicts or people who are doing destructive things to themselves you gotta make them hit rock bottom and that is the case with so Disney that's the case with Disney we have to let Disney hit rock bottom oh. and then perhaps we can build back the old company that we used to love what did you do wrong um hmm well no you weren't trying to rescue a kid uh, I don't know I guess we have to hear more of your story to figure out exactly what cosmic karma you uh, you have uh, 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 violated. Well, what's this? What's the story from when? Story from when? Yeah, how far back do I go on my story? You know, I don't know <laughs> why this is all, you know, I It's amazing how you never really can tell where these shows are going to go. I had already figured, oh, we'll call this the Andor Effect, and I'll explain why the Andor Effect has returned for Furiosa, and I was going to sit and talk a bit about Furiosa, but I really, I, well, I haven't seen the film. So there's not much I can talk about as for regards to Furiosa. So I figured, well, we'll go to Galactic Star Cruiser and talk about that. Um, <laughs> but then you had to come up with the story of the woman who broke her leg trying to rescue a kid falling off a jungle gym. <laughs> and we and we we able to discover a new life lesson. <laughs> well, I just brought up the story. I didn't come up with it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, now you can have to No, all the thinking's been done. All we got to do now is draw. All the thinking is done. Now we got to just draw. Let's see. Are we still recording? Yes, we still are recording. That's nice to see. I think it sounded a little weird last week when I was just sitting here talking to myself. No, it's better. At least we have you there, and I, I, I don't look like the lonely man in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. It can. It depends on what you're saying or what you're, you know, how how you start. You know, I don't know. I so, don't know. so I got Bo back wearing his uh, long button-down shirt again this week. It's surprising. He should probably. Should, it's summer. He should be in a t-shirt again. <sighs> But you gotta swap up the wardrobe, I would say. You have to what? Swap up the wardrobe. And I haven't done this. I haven't done this in a while. He's got. I've got him um, wearing a belt, and he's tucked in the shirt. 
rather than my usual case where I got them with the shirt wide open with showing the black t-shirt underneath. All fascinating things, I'm sure, to the audience at home. So, um, what the hell, while I'm here, why don't we explain to the audience what we, uh, how we constructed this. I put the vanishing points there, you can see it, and the other one is right there. You know, it's darker them for you. And you notice that even Bo's body has been put, in Fido's body here, has been put in this end. No, you're cutting out, I can't hear what you're saying. Ah, has been put in perspective, even in background. Our, we put the audience eye level right at Bo's eye level. Okay. And coming in on this first panel, that would be the establishing okay. shot. Get that. <laughs> that would be the establishing shot. Uh, careful use of perspective is the sign of quality cartooning. Yes, it is. Mm. It, sh it shows how much you understand what you're doing. It actually makes things easier. It actually makes things easier. You know where to start. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, let me resharpen this pencil for Fido. Oh, we miss having you home. There's a whole, there's a whole box of uncolored comic strips waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Cause I'm, se I'm seldom in the bed with you. As a as a married couple, we live different lives. Um, I'm usually up all night long. She goes to bed at what ten or eleven. How the hell could you, How the hell can you go to bed that early? Yeah. How the hell can you go to bed that early? My father, when I was a kid, had this thing, uh, I'm awake, everyone's awake. So regardless of whatever time he went to bed, mm -hmm. we had to be up when he was up at what, 5, 6 in the morning. He'd leave the house before 7. Mm -hmm. And I always, for many years, I had left the house before 7 and was led to believe that anyone who didn't leave the house before 7 was wasting away their lives. I don't go to bed till seven lately. <laughs> I'm rebelling against all that in my old age. Yes, you are. <laughs> I don't do anything I don't want to do, and one of the things I don't want one of the things I don't want to do is to go to bed early and get up at seven in the morning. I have a good bit of advice for everyone out there in the photo audience. Don't do things that you don't want to do. <laughs> it's re it's it's remarkably simple idea. And those are the people. Those are the people who are unhappy. Those are the people who have hobbies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have no hobbies. No. I have vices. You have what? 
vices. <laughs> Let's get the beer bottle label drawn here, and uh, both shoulder, and I guess you see that part of the shirt. Now we're going to make that a black t-shirt, black t-shirt. Now the last line here, we've got Felicia like really doing a good acting job here. Acting! So she's... Uh, leaned on her left leg the little expressive paw up here pointing up pointing at the mistake that was corrected she really has to sell it here and it's a slight turn down on the eye so she's looking at Fido with the appropriate distaste Uh, yeah, uh, only only a cat can really uh, do that. The appropriate level of distaste. Yes. Hey, tell her to get your brush. Get her brush. Nurse lady, get her brush. Charles, relax, will you? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. This is what I love. Wow, she must be at a really good hospital. How many nurses have come in the room since we started this broadcast? So three? Uh -huh. It's been less than an hour. Well, she is in a deluxe private room on the 12th floor of some skyscraper in Boston. The ladies and gentlemen at home will be happy to know that the chief colorist has retrieved her long-handled comb. Hooray! Oh, you stop being so silly. You silly. Silly man, you. Silly man, you. Oh. So, Jenny Nicholson did a good job here with their... Her, with their with her obituary of Galactic Star Cruiser. I'm sorry, what? What'd you say? Jenny Nicholson did a good job with her obituary of the Galactic Star Cruiser. I'm going to oh. go over and talk about this particular oh. show now so you don't I need to hear every word. Being a bitch, and I'm like, who are you talking about? No, she wasn't. She was not a. that word. <laughs> She's my new hero, heroine. I hate, I hate using that word heroin because I'm pr pretty sure YouTube's going to think it's the drug. Mm -hmm. It's become a bad word. Mm. Or a bad sound. <laughs> Is Jenny a girl boss? Girl boss. <laughs> She's my favorite girl boss. <laughs> but um, there's a, she brought with her a camera while she was at Galactic Star Cruiser. And um, mm -hmm. she's at the dinner theater show that they have there. And yeah. there's a big column, boom, right in front of her, blocking her face completely. So, and every once in a while, when the, as the show's going on, like a head will peek out 
behind the call. And go back. <laughs> <laughs> is that a science seating or is that just where she ended up? Uh, I think it's a science seating, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Obstructed view. <laughs> But she, she had some problems, like she ordered a few things and they didn't arrive. They gave they put the wrong address on them. And when she would call Disney, they would ignore her. But then she'd go on uh, Twitter at the time and complain. And then suddenly a Disney rep would find her. I mean, it's like they had to go through their own records. They looked up her number and they called her to fix, to yeah. fix these things. Only because she's a friggin' influencer. The average yeah. human being would be completely ignored by Disney okay. because they were kissing influencer ass so hard. She got everything she needed corrected, fixed, where no one else in the world would have. Which yeah. she pointed out. She recognized that, that, yeah, that, that that's what was going on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, get the review up before they close another one on us. <laughs> I said, everyone, quick, get your video of Tiana. Yep, you out here? Yep, goodbye. Quick, everyone, get your reviews out there of Tiana's Bayou Adventure because they're going to close that. Oh, what the hell? Call me back. Yes. All right. Where was I? Oh, yeah, I wanted to. Let me get. Yeah, this one. This is the, this is the one with worries someone. I changed the wording from usually what's so funny to yes. Do you mean this stuff in the newspaper is true? Yes. What's so funny? <laughs> uh, where is our ink? Gee, good question. Now let's uh, let's choose a brush. Usually our favorite activity here at Fire the Comic Strip. We're looking at five brushes here, and uh, just want something that can do reasonable lettering. And these are looking a little bit ratty and a little bit pointy. These are the three I haven't put back in there because they've been heavy rotation. Let's go for that one. That's got a good looking point, doesn't it? Yes. As everyone knows, these brushes are made of the finest Himalayan tree squirrel pubic hair. All right. We're just going to seal the lettering in so that I'm not encouraged to go back and change it. <laughs> One of the important things is to uh, maintain the fidelity of the characters and Bo is supposed to be a bit of an optimist so of course he would say that everything in the newspaper is true as he hopes it to be so. <clears throat> this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Fido font. You may notice that everything is slanted 22 and a half degrees in that direction because the Earth on its axis is tilted 22 and a half degrees in that direction. And by my logic, now the lettering is straight. Since this is all said in a normal tone of voice, let's keep the strokes about as even as possible.
already running in my mind I'm running over the uh, description about a child falling in, well, letting a child fall in a playground <clears throat> Well, I'm thinking of it, actually. Uh, wow. I think our poster child, rather than uh, Jenny Nicholson, should probably be Mr. Peltz, because he's embodying our philosophy today of let it fall. That is what Nelson Peltz has decided to do with Disney. He has completely cashed out and made himself a cool billion dollars in the process and he's in the words of Cartman he said screw you guys I'm going home actually there should be a question mark on here good thing I good thing I have plenty of space I'm reminded of a, a scene from the movie Airplane, which is a Zuckerberg comedy. Zuckerman, Zuckerberg, Abr wow, Abrams and Zuckerberg. That's funny that those names have completely different meanings today. <laughs> but in the movie uh, Airplane, uh, they got a point counterpoint in the news media. These people bought their airplane tickets. They knew what they were getting into. I say, let them crash. <laughs> Peltz looks a little bit like that character in the movie, and you know, let it fall. <clears throat> I think I would have liked to have seen some of these interviews that the um, financial news industries have done with Mr. Peltz as to why he sold the stock. <laughs> Are you indeed taking your ball and going home, sir? <laughs> Peltz is probably being a little bit uh, diplomatic and saying, no, 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 just have a fiduciary duty to do what's proper for my clients. I made them a billion dollars, so this stock is only going to go down anyway, so how we ever sold it at 120 a share is amazing. You'd probably end up buying it back again at 60. After, after uh, Mufasa comes out and Inside Out 2 fails, and, and I think they're doing a uh, some other sequel the newspaper you're reading
You mean this stuff is true? got to leave enough space between these two uh, word balloons to actually do the balloons. So I'm going to draw the balloon in now. letters in as close as possible but you also don't want to be touching the border so many people out there don't quite know what this strange piece of um, paper is that Fido is reading. It's something called a newspaper. Back in the old days, comic strips like this were actually printed for free in those newspapers. And that's where most people see, saw comic strips. That's where they were, what they were created for. The reason why they're this wide is that they should be four panels, four columns long. Newspapers printed in columns. Four panels, I'm sorry, four columns wide. Alright, I'm committed to it. Both said yes. <laughs> Everything in the newspaper, according to Bo, gosh, is true. But, so you see, newspapers don't exist anymore and I guess the reason why they don't exist is probably very pretty clearly demonstrated in my uh, original uh, writing here <clears throat> you mean this stuff is true well, usually <laughs> we had the um, feeling that they weren't lying to us all the time Just on the editorial pages. In Boston newspapers, you can just throw the editorial page away. I'd like to say that the editorial department was the first to be fired when the newspaper started going under, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I think the first to be fired were the cartoonists. <laughs> All right, I got that joke in. Now for the all important signature, come with us, Nelson. Wow, last week I had a half-naked J-Lo. This week I have a 90-year-old investment guy. You never know what this comic strip is going to give you, do you? <laughs> well, there we go. We're going to call that a day this week. Um, thank you for joining us for Fido Live 99, which which we were going to call the return the, the return of the Endor effect, but instead we decided to call. Oops, you can't see that kind of camera. Wow, oh, the iris is just gone now. Instead, we decided to call it "Let It Fall." Uh, hope to see everyone next week, and uh, we probably still won't have the chief colorist next week, but we'll muddle through the best we can. Bye.